a great honor for me to welcome you tonight to the University of Cape Town's official tribute to the celebrated novelist and literary legend, Andre Brink. UCT is hosting this event to acknowledge his extraordinary contribution to national and world literature, as well as his scholarship and, of course, his intellectual leadership here during his tenure at UCT as a professor in the Department of English. I stand before you today not as a writer or a critic or an intellectual. I stand before you as a woman who has lost the love of her life. And I would like to read you a letter that I wrote to Andre on the 6th of February, 2006, exactly nine years before he died. Andre, I love you not because you are the famous Andre Brink, the author of so many marvelous books that have inspired generations, given hope, raised controversies, won prizes, and have given thousands of readers the opportunity of sharing the world of your magical imagination and genius skill. I place them among the absolute best I have ever read. Their offer has my endless admiration and respect. Literature made us possible. I love you not because you offer me the world on a silver platter. Because of your fame and affluence, I have seen places and met people that were beyond my own personal reach. We have traveled across space and time, in flesh and imagination, every journey a miracle and a discovery, every step of the way closer and more intimate than ever before. Holding hands, we continue. No destination necessary. Journeys made us possible. I love you because you are you, in all your newness, uniqueness, and infinite meanings. I love you because, Karina. After Andre read this letter, I got on my knees and I proposed to him, and he said yes. <laughs> and our journey continues. Thank you. He had the most beautiful hands. It seemed as though he had a manicure every day. Many women envied his hands. He would sit in a meeting, chatting to friends, while using nail scissors to cut his own hair. He was a giant. He was a man. He was a man of the world, yet very private. He loved women and married five of them. As children, we got a lot from him. Of course, for starters, his nose. And maybe it will also help us to sniff out couple of stories. We also got his genes. We got him. Until you miss, Papa. I want to conclude with a potpourri of quotes, all those I couldn't fit into the text. Maybe they will illustrate more clearly the various facets of my attempted tribute to Andrew Brink. In Vietnam, where my wife is from, it is customary to put some offering before the altar, often the effigy of the departed one or the ancestor. Cigarettes, whiskey, fresh fruit. What could be more apostle than to leave Andre with words? First, Jorge Luis Borges, who said somewhere in an interview, I quote, luckily memory is not unlimited. One may forget in order to create a new to imagine anew. And a little further, each language is a way of experiencing reality. And then this, the gods do something horrible to people so that later generations may have something to sing about. Andre himself, from Devil's Value, as Willy Berger reminded us in a recent article in the Sunday Independent, I quote, look man, there's nothing you can do about tomorrow. It comes as it must. All you can do is something about this yesterday. But the problem with yesterday is that this never stays down. You've got to keep stamping on it. <laughs> and still from the same book, we fabricate yesterdays for ourselves, which we can live with, which make the future possible, even if it remains infinitely variable and vulnerable, a whole bloody network of flickerings, an intimate lightning to illuminate the darkness inside. In a paragraph before this, the character speaking of Flip Lochner muses, and again I quote, who knows, if we understood what was happening to us, 
we might not have needed stories in the first place. André addressed his audience four weeks ago when he gave his last speech, the acceptance speech for the honorary doctorate that he received from the Université Catholique de Louvain in Belgium. He started with the students because they are the ones who ask questions, the ones who look for answers, he said, moving into the shadows of uncertainty to say no in the face of the certitudes of power. Four days later, after meeting his passionate readers for the last time in Brussels, he would board his final flight towards the land of his ancestors. Dear André, you were flying when you passed away next to your beloved wife, Karina, with whom you spent the last decade of your life. You died in the sky, like the sun does. You died above borders, conflicts, and limits. A few hours earlier, at the airport, you warmly shook my hand, even tired. You looked grateful, peaceful, looking to the future. In April 2004, we found ourselves in Martinique to finally fulfill one of your dearest dreams, to meet the man who has, in the 1960s, encouraged you to give up your choice of exile in favor of your return to your native land the walking legend, the poet and philosopher, Aimé Césaire. On this special occasion, you deserved a big surprise, the projection of a dry white season, where a Caribbean audience of 900 people gives you a standing ovation. You are moved to tears. You describe this trip as one of the most important events of your life. Andre, we had planned to get the whole team together this year, 2015, in South Africa. You, the author, me, the director, and the actors of the film for the South African premiere more than 25 years after the film was made because when the movie came out here, it was banned. Although you are no longer physically with us, we will do it, I promise, because you are forever present through your legacy and in our hearts. Until then, Andre, we say goodbye for now. Thank you. And it seems to me Andre, what I wanted to see Andre as, was someone who in a way had this kind of claim to a universal culture, which is a much, much wider culture, uh, not limited to a British culture or an English culture. And I think, in a way, I see his role in the English department as bringing that kind of comparative world of focus. Um, and in his very last speech at Louvain, who does he invoke? He invokes Sophocles, he invokes Baudelaire, he invokes his great hero Camus. Uh, so we see in, in Brink someone who, I think, brought a world literature to bear. When he came to UCT, we were suddenly getting lectures on Cervantes, and Calvino and a whole host of other uh, very important figures. So in a way, I think Brink's moment is a moment where he opened the English department to being a literature department in a much more important sense. 